BBC. BBC. You're with the BBC. And now witness. 30 years ago, the young left-wing Prime Minister of Grenada, Maurice Bishop, was executed following a coup. It became the trigger for an invasion of the tiny Caribbean island by the US military. Alex Last has been speaking to Ann Peters, who was with Bishop in his final hours. It's 1983, and the tiny Caribbean island of Grenada has a left-wing revolutionary government, led by a popular, charismatic former lawyer, Maurice Bishop. But it's the height of the Cold War, and the United States now sees Grenada as a threat. We've been slow to understand that the defense of the Caribbean and Central America against Marxist-Leninist takeover is vital to our national security in ways we're not accustomed to thinking about. For us, the regular people, I don't think we saw ourselves as communists or anything else. Anne Peters was then a teacher of nursing. Though not a member of the revolutionary movement, she was the president of the Nurses Association. We saw ourselves as a nation. Uh, like the Jamaicans would say, we little but we talawa, which meant that we were a small nation, but we bold enough to stand up and take on anybody. Maurice Bishop had been in power in Grenada since 1979 when he led a coup against the dictatorial Prime Minister Sir Eric Gehry. Isolated by the West, Bishop developed close ties with Cuba. His new revolutionary government focused on health and education, social welfare and women's rights. Parliamentary elections were put on hold. Still, Maurice Bishop became a hugely popular figure. Comrade Bishop said for 1980, education and production. I don't think there had been any other country in the world like that. We had a prime minister who was in his 30s. We had ministers in their 20s. I was 24. So we were looking at a bunch of young people who became very energized. You know, you were highly motivated. Long live free Grenada, forward ever, backward never. But in October 1983, the revolution's leaders turned on each other. A row within the ruling party over the future of the leadership got out of control. One faction, backed by the army chief, placed Maurice Bishop under house arrest. Grenadians were stunned. Protests began immediately. On the morning of October the 19th, a huge crowd of demonstrators freed Maurice Bishop, and then, together, they took control of the army headquarters at Fort Rupert, an old colonial fort which overlooked the capital, St George's. Anne, who'd been on the earlier demonstration, was asked to come up to see Morris in the operations room. But unknown to either of them, troops in armoured vehicles had already been dispatched to retake the fort. When I got there, Morris had a notebook and he was giving people some things to do, assignments and whatever he wanted done in terms of communication, what were the messages he wanted sent out, who we needed to make calls to. People kept coming in and out of the room, school children, regular citizens, the wife of some of the other ministers. Now, Jackie was in that room with me at that time. We were sitting on a chair close by. Jackie's uh, Jacqueline Kreft, the Minister of Education, who was very close to Morris Bishop. Mm -hmm. And um, she continued saying to me, Anne, I am so scared. This thing doesn't look right. So I said, what is there to worry about? Uh, you know, we're back to normal. Let's just forget that. Let's do um, And she said to me, no, I'm scared. Uh, some young people came into the room and I remember this young lady really holding on to, to Morris and she was crying and very tearful. You know, they were saying, oh, we were so happy that now our leader has been released. And while doing all of that, I heard the loudest explosion I will ever remember. Soldiers had begun their attack on the fort. The Revolutionary Armed Forces sent a company of soldiers to re-establish control of Fort Rupert. People were screaming, people were running, the room was filled with smoke. And I remember when I sort of came around to really recognizing what was happening, I was lying on the ground, and then I looked on the ground and there was one of my very close friends who was literally sh shredded. Then the gunfire continued and I could only hear his voice. And I remember Morris's words, oh my God, they've turned the guns on the people. Outside, many of Bishop's supporters had been shot. Others fell to their deaths, jumping over the battlements to escape the gunfire. Back inside the room, Anne lay on the floor, badly injured. 
I had some sharp nail in my arm. I got six broken ribs. I was burnt on my right leg and um, had one bullet in my thigh. One of the things that would always be in my memory is that there was a young man who was a soldier with us in the room on that day. As, after a while, when, when all, a little bit of quiet came and, and he was communicating with Morris, he said, look, I am going to go out and try to talk to them. And if, if something happens and I am no longer around, I would have done my best. And I remember him crawling, going to the door. He cracked the door open. And I remember his words, Langain, hold your fire. We have a lot of injured people in here. And the voice coming back says, drop your guns and come out with your effing hands in the air. So he got up from the floor, put his hands up in the air and walked out of the room. He looked back and he says, come out. And Maury said, let the women and children go first. I had to find the adrenaline rush and whatever energy that was left in me to get up from the floor, try to get my hands up in the air and try to get out of that room. I had to go through a corridor and there were some steps that you had to go down. When I was going through the corridor, I saw some of my own friends lying on the ground, some of them dead and some of them were injured. One particular friend looked up at me and called my name and he said, Anne, help me. And I, I remember just closing my eyes for a moment because there was nothing I could have done. And that was very painful. When I got to the end of the step, there was a burning vehicle at the bottom. So to get to that, to get down the steps, you had to either run through the fire or jump. And I decided I was going to jump. I found the energy, I jumped. When I got to the bottom, I remember that Jackie was in the room with me. And I remember saying to her, jump, Jackie, jump. And one of the things that stayed with me and continues to remain with me today, Alex, is I always say to myself, maybe if I did not call her name, nobody may have recognized her. She jumped and the both of us were continuing down to get out of the fort. And then I heard a voice said, look, Jacqueline Crave, don't let her pass out. And they took her. She was holding on. We were holding on to each other. They took her. And I continued to walk down the exit of the fort. And there was this volley of gunshots. And I remember saying to myself, I am sure they've just executed everybody else. Morris Bishop and seven key supporters, including Jacqueline Kreft, had been put up against a wall and shot. Their remains have never been found. The Army Chief General Hudson Austin set up a military regime and imposed a curfew. Anne, badly injured, went into hiding. Just six days after Bishop's murder, a US-led invasion force arrived. We have taken this decisive action for three reasons. First, and overriding importance to protect innocent lives, including up to a thousand Americans whose personal safety is, of course, my paramount concern. Second, to forestall further chaos. And third, to assist in the restoration of conditions of law and order to the island of Grenada. On that particular morning, Alex, when the Americans arrived, I did not care whether they came from Mars, from some other planet, what I wanted was relief, that happened. But after a while, you started to get intolerant. You, you said, look, you came and you did what you had to do. Now leave us alone. That was the general view. <laughs> the last US combat troops left the island in December. The following year, Grenada returned to Western-style democracy. 17 members of the revolutionary government were later jailed for their role in the overthrow and killing of Morris Bishop and the others at the fort. Anne Peters took months to recover from her injuries. She went on to become a government health minister. She still lives in Grenada. Alex Last. For more of our history programmes, go to bbcworldservice.com slash witness.